Let's talk about bridging finance, but specifically around the cost of bridging finance, okay? Everybody can go out there and put an advert together or a video together to tell you that they, they offer bridging, okay? I've done so. I've got lots of videos on it. However, I'm gonna, in this video, I'm going to break down and try to help around some of the questions that I get asked. What's the minimum amount of money you need to put down on a deal at the moment? What's the maximum loan to value you can get? How does the interest process work? How does the fee structure work? It, you know, retain interest, service interest. Uh, and I'm gonna break this down on a live sort of quote for you. So on a typical quote, if a client came to, comes to me and says, I wanna get a bridge, these are the figures, can you work them out for me? So I thought I'd put them out there. Um, and in terms of, you know, costings, break it all down for you. So at least you understand how the fee structure works to see whether or not these deals can actually fit on bridging. So hopefully you find it's useful. If you've used bridging in the past, let me know what your expense has been. Um, and if you've got any other comments, please leave them below. Thanks a lot. All right, I'm going to assume that you know about bridging. I'm going to assume that you have looked into it maybe or, or, or thinking, okay, or you've seen some of these videos on social media and said, you know what, people are making money out of this because they're buying property and they're essentially being cash buyers or they have access to funds very, very quickly and, and we want to get into properties. But how does the costing structure work? What's the criteria around it? So let's run through it. I mean, I have done a very in-depth video on bridging. So if you put, I don't know, bridging finance, I think I'm on number one or number two on YouTube. So that's quite a very long in-depth uh, a sort of overview of what bridging is. This video is really around costs, who can get the bridge, and, and how does it work. So, first of all, these type of bridging finances, when you're going for bridging, let's break this down actually, no one wants to go on bridging. No one wants to pay the bridging rates, which are a lot more expensive than your traditional mortgage. So, really, common sense is, if you can get a property mortgage, get it mortgaged, okay? So what I mean by that is if the property has got a working kitchen and a bathroom and you think it's suitable for rent, do it, okay? And then maybe do the work to it later on uh, in bits and pieces. However, if you buy a bit of a wreck and you really want to add value to it and you really want to sort of, you know, push the price up and you think it's not mortgageable, then obviously you've got to go down the bridging route. When you're going down this bridging route, there are a number of options you need to look at. One. How much is it? Because bridging lenders, uh, a lot of them uh, play in different areas, okay? So I've got lenders that will do minimum loan size, 150K, okay? So they don't they don't want the small stuff, okay? They're, they're not interested in the small stuff, okay? Some 200K, some 300K, okay? So those type of lenders, yes, they've got good rates. They've got flexibility around various circumstances. However, if you're buying a property at 100K, that's not the lender you want to go with, okay? So... Different lenders are, I suppose, they're putting themselves in different boxes or they're good for the certain things, okay? Some lenders are very, very good on rate, are very bad on flexibility. Other lenders are very, very good on, uh, again, rate, but maybe the loan to value is, is, is low. Others are very good on loan to value, however, the rate's much higher. Others are very good with credit circumstances or your personal circumstances. However, they may value the property on a 180-day resale value or worse, 90-day resale value. So the first point around bridging is don't just sort of phone around and go, oh, yeah, I've been quoted, you know, 0 0.45. Yeah, well, what, what's that based on? What, what's the loan to value? What's your circumstances? Have you done this before? What's your experience? Okay, so don't be fooled by calculators. Okay, although I'm going to show you a calculator now. But don't be fooled by calculators. Don't be fooled by text on websites. Okay, bridging is very, very um, bespokely written for a lot of for a lot of the cases okay so that's one thing uh, the second thing is around uh, loan to values okay a lot of the lendings at the moment being done is around between 60 to 70 percent loan to value on bridging okay a lot of it and in this video I'm actually going to talk about non-regulated bridging these are investments buy to let commercial property these are not residential or they've got no tie to you personally to live in or a family member to live in that's a that's a regulated bridge i'm going to talk about like a pure investment bridge okay so a lot of that business is being done in between 60 and 70 percent loan to value okay now what i'm looking to do is saying okay well there are lots of lenders in that pool okay and there are various rates around it they've got various flexibilities and there's various things they can do some will give you extra money to do up the property once they've given you it so they're all they're all different propositions the bridging that 
I get a lot of questions on is essentially between 70 to 80 percent loan to value so basically the people that are saying I want to buy a property but I want to put the minimum deposit down maybe because I want to use the funds to do up the property so I want to hold back whatever I can yes it might be a little bit more expensive but I can live with it because I'm not going to be here long okay let's be honest you don't want to be on a bridge for a long time you want to be on a bridge do your thing and get the hell out whether it's a sale whether it's a refinance or whatever it is so I'm going to talk about that 75% loan to value which is the holy grail and I have actually got a lender now that we are um, we're, we're in talks with and we, we've started doing some inquiries with them at 80% loan to value okay now when I say loan to value loan to value that could mean anything okay what is it what are they basing on is it on an open market value which means the surveyor goes then says the property currently in its current state if I had to sell it it will be worth this or is it on a 180 day re resale value basically you've got 180 days to sell the property or is it on a 90 day resale value if they had to sell the property in 90 day they don't really tell you that on the websites they don't really t talk about that but that's very important because that can affect the price of the property you know if you've got longer to sell the property you might get more money money for it but if you've got shorter time to sell the property you might have to sell it at a discount and that's what it exactly is and when it's a buoyant market there's not that much difference. There is a difference still between a 180-day resale and an open market value. But when the market's a bit choppy, that difference is quite a lot, especially between um, open market and a 90-day. Okay? So that's one trick. So watch out for that. Secondly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through a bog standard, I would thought, 75% deal. Because when somebody says it's 70% or 75% or 65%, by the time you've done the interest and you've rolled up the interest and a lot of that business is being done rolled up no one's really servicing stuff okay let me just turn this off uh, no one's really servicing these type of loans so it's not, they're rolling all the costs up and then what happens they will pay that back so if that is the case then um, that 75% tends to become less so it becomes 70% loan to value so you've got to cater for that so in the calculation that I'm doing now that you will see the figures you will see the difference between the rolled up and, and the actual gross amount and hopefully you find it useful so uh, yeah enjoy it here we go so let's have a look at this uh, bridging quote now this is as I've mentioned on 75% loan to value property value let's say is 200,000 pounds clients looking to put down 25% but the first important point is just because you the product says it's 75% loan to value it doesn't mean you're going to get 70 you're going to get 75% of the money and that's because of the interest and the fees are generally rolled up in most cases granted if someone can afford to service the loan so say they they can afford to service the loan themselves then you can just service the loan and pay as you would on a normal mortgage you'll pay your monthly I don't know in this case whatever the monthly amount is you know um, you know 1% 0.5% a month so you can either service this loan the majority of the cases nearly all of them we tend to do is rolled up interest where somebody's saying look I want to add the fees on add the interest on and then when I get out of the loan uh, I will you know I or, or basically what happens is they will roll it up so they will take all of that off your initial charge so off the initial 150k they will take all everything down and you're left with 131,525 that's all the interest for the for 12 months um, which is this amount um, and some of the other fees involved uh, gives you this total amount so first of all so if you if this was going to be 70% loan to value or 60% or 65% then you still got this this still was going to happen so you're not going to be left with that and that's a rookie mistake a lot of people may tend to make because on a buy to let mortgage for example when you go for a 75% loan to value you end up with 75% loan to value okay on a bridge you tend to if you opt to go down um, this route which is the rolled up sort of route um, you tend to get less because they're taking all the fees and charges and generally what happens is if you get out of and depending on different lenders if you get out of that bridge say within three months or four months or five months what they will do is they will reimburse some of this interest that they've taken up front and they will give you that back okay so very important point so this one's 200k 75% loan to value the initial rate is going to be 0.85 it is on an open market value 
Um, lending fee, very standard. Most bridging lenders are charging 2% at the moment. So the lending fee is £3,000. General insurance fee, £150. Um, you've got the retained interest, which is the interest over 12 months. Uh, and then you're left with this. And indication of their legal fees. This is important. This is not your legal fees. This is the lender's legal fee. So you end up paying for the lender's legal fee as well, as well as the survey fee, the valuation fee. Um, so this gives you an idea of a bridging deal itself. Okay, A lot of people. Now, these is very much dependent on your loan to value, your circumstance. So I'll give an example. If you are someone who has never owned a property, um, as is looking to get into this uh, the market and going by the bridge these are the type of rates that you could expect if you're somebody that has had maybe uh, done this in the past got bridging or has got buy to let we may even be able to get you 80% loan to value on a bridge the rate will be I think 0 0.95 something like that so a little bit higher but not too much higher in all honesty um, but you know lenders are different you know they've all got different processes um, a lot of the bridging lenders um, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of experience but it is really useful and the better uh, the rates become the, the the less this loan to value is so there are some really competitive rates zero you know below five, 0 0.5 but, you know, you need to have really good deposits. You're talking 40, 50, 60 percent deposits. So um, it's very much dependent on the property and the deposit and your own background. So hopefully you found this useful, guys. Let me know what you think about it. I have check out my other videos and I will put them at the end screen uh, on bridging finance and auction finance. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.